One of my absolute favourite things about Dead Island, as someone who really liked the RPG elements of that game, was the fact that there was essentially a class system. There were four different characters, each of whom played four different roles, they specialised in different things, and they all had their own unique skill trees. You also couldn't quite max out those skill trees, so you did have to do a bit of thinking about what you wanted to spend your points on. It's just something that provided a lot of replayability, because I would go back and make different builds, and it especially shined in co op because different people played different roles. In Dying Light, this wasn't a thing. There was one character, one set of skill trees that you could completely max out, so every co-op partner has the same setup. Yeah, you can choose like what weapon you want to use in the moment, and absolutely there are ways where you could vary it up, and, and players did get quite creative. But it didn't encourage you to make specific RPG-like builds, which is fine, because that's not really what the game was going for. But Dying Light 2 is bringing back those RPG roots with an all-new armor system. There are six different equipable slots, which can increase your armor, as in your defense to damage, but also they each have different stats that you can spec into. So while you're out and about exploring the world of Dying Light 2, you're going to pick up random pieces of armor. As far as I can tell, there's no way to actually farm specific types yet, so you're just going to find it out from looting areas, fighting enemies, and these different pieces of armor will have different rarities associated with them. You know, typical that, that green, blue, purple, gold kind of tier system. And not only that, but every piece of armor you pick up is going to belong to one of four classes. Brawler, Tank, Medic, and Ranger. Brawler focuses on increasing your one-handed weapon damage as well as your resistance to damage from infected. Tank focuses on increasing your two-handed weapon damage, it gives you resistance to fire damage, and it also slows down the infection process at nighttime. Medic gear revolves around increasing your parkour attack damage, increasing your healing effectiveness, and your health regeneration speed. And finally, Ranger gear, as you've probably guessed, increases your ranged weapon damage and decreases your stamina a cost for ranged weapons. Now it's important to note that those are just the main stats that are exclusive to those classes, but there are a lot of stats that have a lot of crossover between the classes. So for instance, uh, you can get extra combat XP and decreased stamina cost for melee weapons from both Brawler and tank gear. I did take the time to make a shitty little Venn diagram that hopefully clearly displays all of the 21 stats that are found in-game and how you can acquire those stats through different classes. I've yet to find a stat that is universal across all four classes, but there are a few that are shared amongst three classes. So for instance, recognition time is a good example, which increases the amount of time it takes for enemies to notice you when you're being stealthy. You're not just limited to the ranger class class, you know, Skyrim stealth archer style. You can get it with the medic gear and the tank gear too, so you can sneak up behind someone with a two-handed sledgehammer and break their kneecaps. Now it is important to note that I've been playing a pre-release build of this game, and a day one patch could change this a little bit, but I'm pretty confident so far that this is the definitive list of what you can get in-game. There are 21 different stat boosting effects you can get from different pieces of armor across all four classes, and with the amount of crossover between the classes there is, it gives you some wiggle room to play around with things and customize it to your liking. And also, it's not like you're just locked into one class, you know, like World of Warcraft style, proper RPG style, you know, you can change your gear anytime you like. So you can be a ranger for a day, you can be a tank, it's entirely up to you, or you can make some hybrid combo and just switch it out on the fly. One thing I did find pretty peculiar is that there are no stat boosting effects for blunt or sharp weapons. One-handed, two-handed weapon damage, sure, ranged attacks, parkour attacks, but nothing for blunt and sharp. And honestly, I think this was a pretty good decision. There is a bigger difference going between one-handed and two-handed weapons than there is going between blunt and sharp. And it's not like any particular enemy has a certain resistance or, you know, vulnerability to blunt or sharp. It really just comes down to how you want to play, you know, how agile and fast do you want to be? How much damage do you want to output? What are you thinking in terms of stamina management? Overall, it's a pretty versatile system that adds replayability and keeps things fresh when playing co-op. Maybe not quite to the same extent as having different characters with different roles and different skill trees, but still, it adds variability and it's just fun to play around with. It's fun mixing and matching things, getting a new piece of gear that maybe is a slightly higher level or a different rarity, and then weighing up the pros and cons of switching out those stats. Unfortunately for you cosplayers out there, there isn't a transmog system yet. Uh, I say yet because 
not because they've confirmed they're going to add one in, but because I think it is a definite possibility that they might add it in post-launch. Uh, they've definitely gotten the feedback that this is what some players want, is the ability to wear a certain piece of armor, but make it look as though they're wearing something else. You know, maybe you want to retain this cool appearance you have, but you want to switch out your stats. Right now, that's not a thing in the game, but hey, it could be in the future. And that pretty much wraps it up. That is everything you currently need to know about the gear system and the class system in Dying Light 2. Uh, just a disclaimer once again, I've been playing an early build of the game and I haven't even finished the game yet. So if anything does change, I will update the pinned comment. It will have the latest, most up-to-date version of this Venn diagram infographic, as well as any annotated comments about what has changed. But I'm pretty confident this is what we're gonna be rocking with for a while. Let me know what class interests you the most, what you think you're going to be playing with, or if you're going to try a bit of everything. I'll be in the comments below sort of chatting with you. I'm very curious to see what you have to say, and I'll see you in the next video. Catch you guys.